No, no, yeah. no. I guess that, that, yeah, cool. And Ali, what do you all want to talk about? The, that's a good question. I mean, for me, I mean, especially with me being new in higher ed and like summertime is mm -hmm. new for me. Um, and also just, I guess, kind of like what, what's going on, what's to expect, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that I can speak to. It'll take okay. about 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and we'll cool. go, we can go from there. Cool. Uh, summer is, I mean, it's a whole different critter. Um, oh. It is a lot of a little younger people running around to and yeah. fro um, under the care of uh, <laughs> their chaperones who um, your mileage will vary as far as how involved they are. Uh, sports teams, sports camps, there's two different flavors of sports camps. There's sports camps where teams come, uh, including head coaches and assistant coaches. And, uh, you know, the, the sports camp is just an extension of and a way to have like some team practice over the summer kind of below the radar of the OSAA because the coach isn't running it, right? They're, they're yeah. just mm -hmm. taking totally. their, their campers, mm -hmm. uh, they're chaperoning their campers. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not truly like team practices, but it's general skill development that's led by the OSU coaching staff. Okay. And so they go off and do their thing. And then when they come back, you know, it is team bonding, team whatever. And those coaches, you know, have those kids pretty well dialed in and and uh, with the added incentive of if they screw up here, they might be getting benched <laughs> for, you Ooh. know, the season. <laughs> um, so uh, so that's that's almost like that's the the gold standard, you know. Um, we've got some groups where there's adults that are chaperoning, um, but um, it's also a chance for those, like those adults don't see each other on a regular basis, but have some connection to each other. So like I'm thinking 4-H groups, uh, mm -hmm. groups where like, I think we did boy state or girl state, and that's done through the I think it's the VFW or the American Legion, one of the, one of the, I think it's the, might be the American Legion. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, the holdover, right? The women's auxiliary of, but now that's, I mean, that's so dated, it's not even funny, but it still <laughs> says it um, yeah. for girl state. Um, and that one's one where, I mean, the, the students are fairly closely supervised, but then also the chaperones want to hang out with each other. And so there's a little bit of a tension there as far as like, um, you know, are you really paying attention to what the kids are doing or is it just kind of mm -hmm. to us? Um, yeah, they're like, oh, here you go. Like we're here, but like, mm, yeah, yeah. Right. And then there's also the sports camps that aren't team-based where, you know, small groups of, of kids might come, but that have like an identity in common, like, you know, from a particular swimming club or team or whatever, but it's not the team came with the entire coaching cadre coming with them. Um, and then the chaperones end up being like OSU um, grad coaches mm. that are on the team. And that's just a show. Um, yeah, that sounds myself. I don't know if you caught that or not. Um, yeah, but, um, because uh, you know, like sometimes all of a sudden it becomes like you did sleep here last night, right? Because <laughs> right, like, yeah. you didn't. Um, yeah, or that it's coaches that are kind of like individually contracted by athletics and. And they've been doing it for years. And so now this is kind of the little friend group of pro coaches that they have, or one of the friend group of coaches that they have. And so we've had crazy craziness where, um, you know, the doors got locked. And for some reason, at two o'clock in the morning, when the coaches had been out doing whatever, but drinking yeah. was involved, um, mm -hmm. they thought that they shouldn't come in through the lobby because somebody might see them 
Yeah. They thought climbing up the side of Holly Hall to try and get yeah. in through one open window was a better. Are you? Oh my God. <laughs> These are people wow. that are like, you know, in their 30s and 40s. <laughs> yeah. One, I'm like, like, what they were able to do when they were in their late teens and early 20s is I, not yeah. the same as what they're able to do now, no matter how much conditioning <laughs> they do along with the team. Um, yeah. So that was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that, I mean, it's summer's just different, I guess. Yeah. No, um, no. Generally, the students are fairly well behaved. Mm -hmm. uh, and generally, they're fairly well supervised, but you, you kind of got to watch the chaperones. And so each group has its own kind of flavor. The good news is, is that um, most of our groups aren't new to us and we know what we're signing up for. Gotcha. Um, and so people have a kind of a sense. Uh, that maybe less so now because it's been a few summers for some of these groups. Um, but, you know, uh, that I think that's the big thing is that there's just incredible variety. Yeah, no, I, I Ali shared me the document of like so far of like what different um, conference groups are like coming, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah, we got a, got a variety of them. So, nice. yeah. Do we have any of the Nike sports groups this year or not because of the um the intramural the student legacy park renovation this summer? Um we have Nike soccer, tennis, and swim. Tennis is going to be taking a bus off site every day to use yep. tennis courts. Yeah. Um, but I I think that's the only group that's impacted. Like they figured out what they were doing for soccer. I don't know what they're doing, but <laughs> they've got it figured out. There's plenty of grass around. So, I, mean. I mean, yes. I <laughs> just they seemed uh, like they were gonna find a way to make it work with rec yeah. sports and everything. So good, um, and, and those groups are are um, you know Nike's here because we we've, we've given them exceptional service and mm -hmm. a really good job of meeting their needs and. I mean, it's, it's, uh, but it's Nike. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the campers that are coming to that are well resourced, generally. Yeah. No. Either definitely. because they're phenomenal in their sport and there's some kind of sponsorship happening to get them there. Yeah. No. Yes. Mom and dad are self funding and are fully bought into, you know, the brand. Mm -hmm. It goes with that. Yeah. Expectancy. No, that's. No, it's I, when I found out like Nike was something that we did, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Okay. And I also think it's kind of interesting that they aren't at the U of O. That says yeah, that's about yeah. what we're providing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I feel like if you, if Nike could find a way to throw money at the University of Oregon, they're going to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're throwing money at us. So, uh, um, huh. hmm. <laughs> kind of anyway. tell you something there a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's good. Yeah, th those are good groups. The the groups we have to watch out for. Uh, I don't think mm -hmm. they're coming. Um, like Christ in Youth, I don't think is coming yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that uh, situation. They can't the come. Oh, the renovations. Uh, right. Lascelles. Oh, okay. Is that what's being renovated? Uh. Yes. Uh, There's nowhere yes. for them to have church. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, well that's, that's unfortunate, you know. <laughs> um. So that one is. Mm -hmm. that's a hard one um, yeah the uh we had a summer conference staff member once uh you can are you do you have any video at all if you can you see me do air quotes like oh yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. accidentally yeah, I got you. um mm -hmm. locked some misbehaving christ and youth campers in the <sighs> kitchen in holly <laughs> <Woo. Woo. laughs> because he couldn't find a chaperone Oh and he was pretty sure these guys were not giving him their real names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was not going to conclude the, the interaction until he'd found a chaperone. Mm -hmm. and, and that took yeah. a long time. Um, wow. Because well, I don't know what they were doing, but it was pretty egregious. I can't remember, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, wow. That is, that's wild. But like, you know, well, the yeah. things you got to do, things you got to do, right? Like, right. Eh. <sighs> These are these are kids that are pretty. A lot of them are, I think, pretty bottled up at home. Oh, I can imagine. Like I think too. Like for these pandemics, since the pandemic too, right? Like, right. Ooh, but yeah. even pre-pandemic, they were pretty bottled oh. up at home. And then 
they come here and the bottle pops off. And oh, they go. Got um, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Well, I think about it too. Like I think about too. A lot of these right, these kids that are coming in, like they're like, oh gosh, it's college. Like, it's this whole experience, mm-hmm. like campus, right? It's, it's got to be so exciting and also like oh, I'm gonna go do what I can do kind of thing so yeah <laughs> oh oh someone else joining us oh. <laughs> a new person oh he's coming in Caitlin. Hey, Caitlin hello Caitlin we have a small group with us today but welcome <laughs> feel free to join in so, Hello. Hi. I just got out of the gym. Sorry, guys. No problem. You're all right. Um, do you have any? So we were kind of Cole is from OSU, uh, and uh, so uh, we were kind of having an OSU specific <laughs> conversation. But do you have anything you want to talk about or would like to hear about when it comes to summer conferences and summer operations? Um, I just want to know what your guys' perspective is on student staff during the summertime when they're working, because last summer, I'm just going to say it was a shit show because there was not a lot of accountability. And when we were doing conference services, we had to help out with cleaning just because there was a short turnaround time. But hopefully this summer, we're, we have a thing called summer housing assistant and they're getting paid hourly this time with a room stipend. So hopefully that might motivate them to get more work done, but yeah, that's on the concept of motivation and actually them doing their work. Yeah. Um, I. Cole, Ali, you have anything to add? I I have thoughts, but uh, not at this moment. No, not at this moment. No. Um, I uh, for us it was supervision. Um, we we had a similar dynamic where we had like student custodial assistants who were supposed to be turning the rooms, um, and they weren't well supervised. Um, and what solved it for us was um because we had our like our full-time custodians worked for a contractor and they weren't supervising students that wasn't part of their gig and we didn't invest very heavily in um supervision for those student custodial assistants um and we've kind of flipped that model where now our custodians are um our full osu employees And we don't necessarily pull them out of their academic year building during the summer. They're responsible for all of the turns that happen and the cleaning and whatnot. And they have students then who can assist them. Uh, We call them building services assistants um, that are different than our conference assistants. Our conferencing staff are, if it were a hotel, they're kind of like the front desk and concierge staff. Um, so they're responsible for the keys and the rooming lists and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, we have a different crew that does the cleaning and then they're supervised within our custodial operations now. And so that has helped immensely. I think you're right with the hourly, um, especially if there's a way to like go and check their work um, and make sure like if they say they were working for four hours, well, then what did you do? And somebody's kind of checking in on that, um, I think is a, a good way to do it. But I would also say that I've done summer conferencing work at OSU for over 20 years, or I've watched the program for over 20 years. And um, we've had several different models around um, the building services aspect of it. And um, they all have um, flaws. And they all have different upsides. Um, and then I, I um, also worked at another institution. And your problem is is probably universal. Um, you know, we we had students who back in the day under that old model where, like, you know, I've caught them sleeping. Um, you know, they would do a really crappy job if they needed to clean ten rooms or fifteen rooms in a day. They 
get that done in an hour and then they'd go nap for seven um, and then clock out and go home. So, um, you know, I, I would say we've, I, yeah, it's, it's not uncommon that you have students who are um, just trying to skate by and, and even to a certain extent making a game out of it. Not particularly helpful, I would imagine, but I mean, supervision is key and, and having somebody that's kind of working alongside them in a crew size that whether that's a student lead that's empowered to actually lead or a, or a full time employee that has some overall responsibility for the cleanliness and operation of the facility that's keeping an eye on them and knows that, you know, if the students don't do it, it's going to be them doing it. So they're going to make darn sure the students are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, those seem to be the models that work the best in my experience. Remind me, Caitlin, what institution are you at? Alaska Fairbanks. Okay, that's right. So how, what does your summer operation look like? Um, We're doing something different this year instead of just like, RAs and NCs who do the same job. They made a new title, the summer housing assistant. And <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know. Last summer was my first time doing part summer Congress services when I first got hired. And <clears throat> um, yeah, but I won't be working with them this summer. I just hope that they'll be a little bit more successful than last summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a common problem that uh, are you sort is your custodial staff contracted out or like what happens to the the people that are cleaning the buildings during the academic year? What's their role? We contract them out out of ABM. So okay. you have uh, contracted out custodial services, um, but they just do the general basic cleaning with the common areas like lounges, bathrooms, hallways. So that's pretty much it. Okay. And so the actual room cleanings and like refreshing the linens, pulling the dirty linens and putting the new linens in, if linens are a thing and all that is going to fall on these summer housing assistants to do. Yeah. Um, that, that's what we've been doing. I mean, it's kind of with Alaska, it's unique. I mean, we had, do have, you know, our wildfire. So we have firefighters come in and rent out a building or so and so and then little tiny conference or guest housing stuff like college programs like raw high for high schools and high schoolers I don't know. I don't know. yeah okay how many students do you have for some do you do summer term housing as well yes yeah, so we do um the numbers are looking like under 200 maybe okay we're using our newly renovated dorm finally that only houses 93 residents it's a suite style mm -hmm. and we'll use the other buildings for other programs too okay. how many do we usually have on campus during the summer at OSU? around between two and 300 it's not many it's how sell plus a little bit okay. into the illc but mostly it's just how how sell is i think where most of our summer session housing happens and i'm assuming like in our apartments like so alley over at the gym do you yes I mean, that's a cold summer <laughs> and i don't know ali how is your summer occupancy looking do you do you have any sense of of what that summer turn is going to look like? Um, we what? just started our contract renewal process. So I'm slowly getting, well, it's actually 
a lot of folks are filling out their contract renewal, which is great. Um, but I'm slowly getting some intent to vacate from folks. Right now, I only have one, two, two folks that are definitely moving out in June. Um, but folks only need to give us 30 days notice, so I could find out in May. Uh -huh. It's kind of difficult to know at this point. Um, and then there's also folks who choose to, you know, maybe they do an internship over the summer or they leave for the summer and they still continue to pay their rent, but they're not physically in the building um, that I have to account for. So I think I'll probably have a better idea of how many folks are around um, at the beginning of May. Um, because at that point, the contract renewal will be shut down. And if folks haven't renewed their contract, then they have to vacate their space no later than June 30th, whether they give us an intent to vacate or not. Um, Orchard Court will probably stay pretty full occupancy wise, because we don't have a lot of folks that are graduating, um, or that have like mentioned that they're planning on leaving. Orchard Court residents tend to be more communicative with me about their plans, which is great. Um, but the gem, since it's second year and above, a lot of students kind of wait till the absolute last second to make their decisions, which is not very helpful. Um, I realize as I'm talking about all of this stuff, it's not very helpful right now, but in a month, I'll have a better idea. Oh yeah, no, that's good. I'm just curious. Um... Can I ask, so as someone who's still kind of relatively new to the whole industry, I don't know if that's the right term, but um, when we talk about summer operations, what kinds of things fall under that besides like conferences and then for, you know, students living on campus during the summer? Are there other kinds of things that are commonly like, I don't know, the big ticket items under summer operations? I don't know if that makes sense. But, <laughs> oh, I think so. I would say um, there's a bunch of facility renewal stuff that happens over the summer, uh, but that's that's the other component. Um, I think summer uh, conf summer housing for some summer session students, and then our conference operations are the the two big ones. If I was just not thinking of things that you know I should be when the summer comes back. Yeah, we have to um at OSU we have to be pretty aware of not um not blatantly competing with the local hotels. Um and so there's there's a certain kind of a cap, I guess, around um, you know, we're always gonna have between the way camps come and go and not wanting to like blatantly compete with the local lodging establishments in town, uh, we're always going to have kind of a funny occupancy pattern over the course of the summer um, that it gets a little better, a little fuller every year because we're able to find things to kind of fill holes. But um, it's never going to be like, you know, every night we're running at 80 to 90 percent occupancy um, and I don't even know that we could I mean that you know when you look at what we'd have to bring on as far as custodial staff and and whatnot to pull that off um, I'm not sure that we even have that capacity Um, Ali was just mentioning too about um, start with like, you know, we have a lot that happening a lot too in the summer with like a lot of new students coming to campus. It's probably a lot as well added to the plate. Yeah, absolutely. You know, supporting the, the incoming students for the next fall is definitely a, a big component of summer. And it's one of those ones too that uh, we typically have halls that if we're using them for start, we're not using them for anything else. Um, mm, that's good. So many start sessions. <laughs> And then start is kind of, you know, they're staging stuff there and, you know, all of that, or uh, new student programs and family outreach is uh, staging stuff there and, and all of that. And so, uh, but the reality is those halls are dark over the course of a week, more nights than they're not. Um, and so it's another one where, 
you know, we're not going to fully utilize the space from a revenue perspective. It's just something we have to do to support the institution. And it's kind of the same thing with our whatever dining center ends up being the start dining center as well. And that they, um, it's hard to put other camps with them because the the dining model is very different mm. to start and mm -hmm. uh, than it is for other camps. And that's the other um, adjustment we make is, uh, you know, the camps are kind of an all, especially the youth camps mm -hmm. aren't all you care to eat. And it's uh, <laughs> and so uh, you know at, at the other school I was at a long time ago, <laughs> summer session met the cans of Chef by the number ten tin cans of Chef by Ordi ravioli <laughs> were coming yeah. out and going mm -hmm. into the hotel tray and into the steamer for a minute and then onto the line because mm -hmm. uh, that's what the nine year olds wanted and uh, yeah. right. <laughs> and we were trying to also run summer session dining out of that for our students. And at the end of the day, we stopped uh, requiring them to have a dining plan just because it was canned ravioli, lettuce with ranch, hamburgers, hot dogs, and cheese pizza seemed to be like the menu rotation. That sounds about right for that age group. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, mac and cheese would show up every now and yeah. then as well. Um, chicken nuggets probably too here. Yeah, and there. yeah chicken nuggets and fries, <laughs> but really not a lot of hamburgers, mostly hot dogs, mm -hmm. uh, corn dogs. Oh, corn dogs, um, yeah. Kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> really tacos weren't even a big hit with the, with the 10 year old crowd that was there for basketball camp or whatever. So, um, yeah, we actually had to stop uh, offering because we only had one dining center. So uh, it was the kid dining center. And that's the <laughs> other piece is that, you know, the nice thing about OSU is we have three dining options and yeah. we, pres we preserve Arnold as <laughs> the adult camp slash summer session students slash on campus faculty and staff gotcha. uh, dining option. And then eventually it was. <laughs> The downside is eventually some of the adults that are there with some of the kid camps find mm -hmm. Arnold and they're like, well, here you go, kids, go eat <laughs> lunch and then go back to your rooms in time for, you know, yeah. back on bunk time or whatever <laughs> it happens in the early afternoon. There's usually some kind of a siesta-ish type thing uh. into their <laughs> schedule. And, and we'll be back around 1.30, but if you're not in your bed when we get back, you're in big trouble. And oh then my they'll God. go over to Arnold and have nice grown-up food. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's a that's a whole nother component. Um, is the you know the dining program definitely shifts around, and then the start program dining program we're trying to kind of not feed them kid food, but we have six hundred people to feed. We need them in and out in an hour. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to show off. Our, the quality of our dining operation <laughs> at the same time. A lot, right? yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Mm. I don't think I envy the dining staff at all right now. I'm like, mm-mm. Right. Mm. <laughs> Remind me, Cole, what service center? Are you at the Arnold Service Center? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be, yeah, I'll be officially at Arnold. Yeah, I'll be so, there all summer long. So we will do uh, start lunch happens at Arnold. Okay. It's a whole production. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, it's a it's a whole like you'll see me over there directing traffic or like trying to hand out like here sign up for summer employment at the same time you've got Lisa and Mike will be over there and making sure like here's what here's your option at the at Nori Grill here's your option at the Grill Grill here's your option at the Deli mm -hmm. Spot choose one of those things before you walk in the door you know like yeah right just to help we want people coming into the the servery area and Arnold with a destination in mind and then getting the hell out. Um, so, you know, even that's different than what we would normally want uh, an incoming student to experience, but we're trying to make that turn time happen. And at the same time, we're also trying to feed our, um, our summer session students and then whatever faculty and staff wander in for lunch. So it's, it's very interesting. So, uh, I'm actually looking at where we're going to have start this year, and it looks like they're going to be in McNary for the dining center. Oh, good. So that might make it a little bit easier not mm -hmm. having as many folks um, 
from campus trying to sneak in who knows um (laughs) but yeah we're trying to put start in McNary so that way um Arnold is pretty much focused on the summer session folks especially since we're going to have Bloss offline for the summer see you Caitlin Bye guys, Uh, thank you. And then Marketplace West is going to be used most frequently for food, but Arnold will be used intermittently, uh, like women's basketball camp, since we have them split between Mm -hmm. uh, the west side of campus and south side, they're gonna split their meals at Arnold and Marketplace West and then I think there may be like one start that gets moved over to Arnold okay. because we have a really large conference Zim Fest that's going to be taking over the east side and they'll be eating in McNary, but it's only for a weekend. Right. Um, so yeah, they'll, oh, actually no, start will be in Weston polling. So they'll be eating at Marketplace West that week. Okay. Zim Fest. That'll be, that's a fun group. Yeah, they have been very communicative via email, um, which is great because they're here towards the end of the summer. So hopefully by the time they arrive, they won't have any more questions. Yeah. Um, and they've but, been here before. Uh, probably just, I think it was pre-COVID. So predates everyone that's on the conference team. Okay. Yeah. If I remember right, there was definitely some attempts to have wine with their meals the first go around by a few folks. It is now on their website that the only place that they can have alcohol is in the residence hall in their room specifically. They're not allowed to have it um, because Patrick and I were looking at their website to see what information was provided just overall so we could make sure that there was no... uh, contradiction in what we had been sharing with them and their website number one is laid out really great um but two we noticed that alcohol thing and I was like there must have been some issues in the past for them to have to like spell this out right on the website on the nose yes you you cannot bring in your bottle of Mondavi red blend to Arnold Dining Center and screw the top off and just be pouring everyone a drink Woo! that's right (laughs) As delightful as that might be. <laughs> Allie, are you are you um are you pitching in with summer conferences this summer? Oh, Dave, did you not know oh. that that's part of my job description? No. Oh, yeah. Um, I do all of the logistics for summer conferences on top of all of the apartment stuff, and now I'm doing all of the apartment assignments. <laughs> it's a- <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Mm -hmm. so it's like three full-time jobs right now but it's okay yeah (laughs) yeah but yeah so I do a lot of the logistics of summer conferences leading up to when people arrive uh, including getting all of the velocity access things set up um communicating with the service center making sure that the key pulls happen um I sit in the meetings before people um, when we do like the first intake meeting, I take all the notes, I input everything into star res. Uh, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot. Great. And Matthew, you joined. Um, so Cole and Allie are in the Cole Gary uh, <laughs> persona here on Zoom, but uh, Cole manages one of our service centers, one of our service desks at OSU. So this is a very OSU, you can see this is a very OSU centric uh, first Friday round table. <laughs> Um, knowing that Megan and I really have very little to do with the summer conferences program except trying to stay out of the way and then helping out when we're told and doing what we're told when we're when we're asked to do it. Um, and then Allie is, uh, it sounds like, uh, is the logistics arm of our summer conferences operation in addition to managing our apartment operations, which is about 350 units. And so um, yeah, yeah, she's uh she's kicking ass right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, she is. Yeah. yeah. Matthew is also at University of Alaska Fairbanks. Oh, okay. our corporate relations director. And Matthew, what else would you like to say? 
We did have a chance to talk with Caitlin a little about some okay. <laughs> stuff. Very nervous around this whole new model with the uh, uh, getting rooms turned. That seemed to be a, a thing. Yeah, they're they're moving away from um, sort of trying to use RAs under their. Well, there's a long history at UAF. Like we used to have a totally separate, um, you know, part like a one staff member that then hired, you know, student staff and, you know, ran a whole program, um, like a conference services program. And then that was dissolved, just leadership felt that that wasn't within our mission at the time, um, which unfortunately for us was um, short-sighted because they didn't actually take in what the university and the community demands were <laughs> in that decision. So we suddenly had to uh, when, when, especially when COVID kind of ended, cobbled together our, our which we rebranded our guest housing because we don't have anything else except for providing the housing piece, uh, and that that put a lot of burden on the current hall staff to suddenly be doing in the RAs and things like that, and a lot of expectations were out of alignment, and so um, we've come back around that we do need a full program, and um, right now one of the things we're struggling with is that we're. Uh, um, Adirondack School, and so uh, with the acquisition of, uh, you know, Star Wars bought at Adirondack, and so um, they discontinued their conference uh, module, uh, and so we don't have anything, we don't have a system to manage um, guest housing or conference services right now, which is actually one of the biggest burdens, nor do we have really staff dedicated to it, so thankfully our director is like a, a wizard to, you know, access and building these databases and kind of created things for the short term and eventually we'll probably move over to Star Res so that we can get their conference module, um, you know, for bookings and stuff. And so that's where we're in a rebuilding phase, um, but at the same time, um, because of the tourist season, um, there's no hotels in Fairbanks during the summer um, and there's no, there's a lot of demand from the community for our housing, including even housing the summer workers that are we import from a lot of different countries <laughs> to work in the hotels, um, which has been a different interaction lately than than kind of normal. And then the other is just logistics around um, like doing laundry and things like that. We contracted it out for the first time last year, um, which every all the other hotels also contracted out because they couldn't they didn't have enough internal staff to do laundry. And so suddenly the one um, big commercial laundry vendor in town was super overwhelmed. I guess they had literally mountains of, of sheets um, in their warehouse. So yeah, it's been interesting trying to come recover from those decisions, unfortunately, that were made before COVID. Of course, COVID caused huge disruptions, but it all came, the demand came back very quickly uh, last summer. Um, and so this summer we've restructured like positions, like we're specifically hiring for people to work in guest housing, like when it comes to student workers versus trying to task our current RA staff to do that as well. So, um, so yeah, hopefully it'll be a little bit better this summer. Uh, but we also get fire crews um, because they don't have anywhere else to stay either. Um, and that particular group is difficult because they only stay one night. It's either when they come out from the field or they're coming into Fairbanks and they're staying one night before they go out in the field. Um, and they also tend to be rather dirty. <laughs> and so it's a, uh, yeah, it's an interesting, but that's a contract that we get from the state that, yeah, we're not exactly asked all the time either if we're gonna do something, we're just kind of handed, you need to provide this need and figure it out, so. So yeah, it's a, uh, and we have one hall that we use for for like students, um, and that's just run like a, a regular hall during the academic year. So, but and you contract out your you contract out your dining program. We do. I mean, we already it's Chartwells, which is um, you know the normal contractor, and so they have. What, that's why we call ourselves guest housing to make it clear like we're not doing any other services or coordinating other services. So they have to contact dining services directly. Um, and then they can determine if they have the bandwidth or not to provide the services to 
that group, um, which they normally do, but um, but yeah. Okay. Anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to pick our brains about? Not really. I mean, it just sounds like, you know, staffing is, continues to be kind of like the, the challenge in a lot of realms, but um, yeah, not kind of, not, not really. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't think of anything um, super specific when it comes to summer, but yeah, I just wanted to, I'm sorry I was late. I was helping a student and then I, of course, spaced out and started working on something else and then realized it was already 30 minutes after it started. Oh, like, don't, don't worry about it. Ah, I hate when I do that. Well, we can of course end early, but if anyone has anything else that they wanna you know, jump in, either just some thoughts, some insights or questions, I don't think I have anything to add, but I appreciate at least coming and talking about some stuff, especially for my first time since I'll be uh, during the service center chaos of things. But I know we uh, also are going to be having an intern starting with the service center, which is kind of exciting. So not fully sure how that's looking eventually, but uh, it's someone I guess I'll be like supervising as well. So yeah is that a is that a kuhawai intern yeah yeah mm -hmm. great yeah i'm learning all know, things on this call about my own department yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and i know um conferences um they have two now um one for scholar housing and one for conferences oh, as good. well yeah yeah so yeah so ali is it you and sam then doing conferences are the two point people um yes and then in july gina will be back right uh, and then sam will be transitioning out um at the end of july because they actually just got a job to teach english in japan oh with uh jet yes actually oh. yeah so um for the like heaviest busiest parts of the summer sam and i are going to be the point folks and then Patrick will be like the person that gets escalated concerns. Right. Um, and then Sam is also doing scholar housing alongside the um, scholar housing intern from Akuhawai. Okay. Cool. Well, buckle up. Here we go. That's <laughs> Matthew. So how's your um? Do you, so do you have groups in for guest housing, or is it mostly the firefighters and? We have oh. everything from like academic yeah. programs um, that, you know, happen during the summer and um, as well as like literally like motorcyclists who drive through and it's just like individual preservations um, and community entities. Um, yeah, it's hard because like everything like in a Little League Baseball that isn't like associated with the university, it's because there's nowhere else for them to stay. <laughs> Right. There's no hotels because the tourist industry just books everything solid. Plus, we're continuing to have housing issues due to build up at our military bases. And so um it's um yeah, we we yeah, we we try to do what we can because they would end up having to like sleep in a high school gym or something like that, which you know isn't the end of the world, but if it's for an extended period of time that's not very sustainable so um but yeah that's what's the without the booking system um and right now we're manually invoicing and we have this we're actually using a i don't know if you guys use touchnet but we're using a marketplace <laughs> to collect the money through touch but through touchnet and it's like all the when it comes to the operation side is all over the place and so that's been one of the more, more challenging parts of it but um yeah okay yeah that's very different um we are we go out of our way to not take individual reservations 
board or group reservations. We don't want to be seen as competing with the local hotels. And so we have a bunch of sports camps and youth camps and start and bridge programs, which are you know, academic success, you know, bridging from high school to college. Um, and a little bit of uh, remedial is not the right word, but um, definitely wanting to get people like off to a good start in college who statistics would suggest maybe are less likely to have that be the case. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting because um, we attempted to kind of limit things down for a short period of time. Um, one of the things that we were struggling with for a while was like bed tax, like do we charge collect bed tax? Do we not? You know, there's these kind of weird things around, um, you know, it's a very localized law. Um, and so we don't have concerns about competing, competing with the hotels because they're just, they're already full anyways. Um, but it's just whether or not like we're just making sure we're staying within the law. And, and it just like community demand is so high. And then the somebody gets, you know, the ear of the chancellor and then, <laughs> and so it's either, you know, we're making these exceptions for the friends of the chancellor, or we can just open up the program to as many as people as um, we can kind of house. And so we still, we do try to kind of limit, you know, it's just not just any, there's some affiliation with the university somehow, mm -hmm. or it's a long-standing relationship. Um, you know, then we're kind of continuing those, but um, obviously with the campus too, we have increased safety and um, reporting concerns, you know, when it comes to our campus safety reporting that, you know, we all have to do under the Clery Act. It's like, we don't want <laughs> things increasing unnecessarily due to right. a guest housing population that might be um, doing things to mess up those statistics. So yeah, there's a lot. Okay. Well, it's 1057, so we should probably let folks get on to whatever's happening at, or it's 57 minutes after the hour. That's probably a better way to put it. So we should probably let folks get on to whatever's going to happen at the top of the hour. Um, Cole, Ali, Matthew, Megan, thanks for joining me. And uh, first Fridays, there'll be another one in May where topic to be determined. So hope to and see you there. Ever wants to present one, make sure to reach out. Right. <laughs> I'm not afraid was report, but <laughs> thank you, everybody. Actually, thank you for hosting this. Actually, uh, Cole and Allie, if you could stay on for just a second, that would be great. Yes. Great. All right. Uh, so, Allie, I was actually wondering if you would might maybe not for May, but um, sometime between now and December. Do a 